Okay, so um, this is maybe a bit strange that I'm um, halfway doing a sequel to a video that I haven't published all already. Um, but due to certain reasons, I'll um, I'll. Uh, release this first it's it doesn't so fully matter but um but yeah um i realized that the video i did about the the so-called auto theory um was perhaps a bit too hastily put together and um and um well it, it could have been more definitive, I suppose is what I'm saying, and um, and um, I, I had some idea earlier today about um, what what I should add to it, but now that I begun, I just completely um, blanked out on what the main addition to it was. Um, yes, it was something to the extent that, you know, um, what you should understand is that just look at the word author or um, author in English. Um, the idea of the author theory is that um, Um, the theory wants to shift the emphasis of what is the point, um, what is the place in which films are more fundamentally created. And the theory posits that the director in certain kinds of films, in auteur films, the director uh, is the, uh, the decision making of the director is where the film gets its artistry and even though there is contribution from others the, the decision making of the director is where the work is authored into its final form now there's lots of people who who um, um Uh, who take an is issue with it for whatever reason. Um, I, I don't want to get into that, but um, I um, I can display um, what the authoring process is like. So uh, uh, in in as of yet unreleased video, I. Um, through strange twists and turns, I began talking about an obscure old rock song called Three Nights Running by Harlan Cage. Uh, and I said that um, uh, something that I was presently doing felt about as grand as being asked to audition for the honor of getting to direct a music video for the Harlan Cage song Three Nights Running. I, I just randomly threw it out that I, I didn't um, care about it in any way. But um, I thought that I could sort of, um, well, um, tie things together by actually uh, sort of demonstrating the author theory uh, through, uh, uh, well, uh, um, giving my blueprint for the proposal of a music video for just that song. If you don't know it, maybe you should, well, try to YouTube it and hope it's the... Um, I, I wouldn't know, I, I haven't checked. I. <laughs> 
I only care so much. Um, but uh, <clears throat> but yeah. Anyway, um, the the main idea of the the author theory is that not all directors are authors. So anyway, uh, a big um, you know, there's a, a director called Josef Kahn. Uh, um, K H A N. Um, he he was um he, he's actually a a fairly well known uh, music video director. He did Knights of Sidonia for Muse, and then then he also did um. Wait, he did that stronger kind of flash dance esque music video for Britney Spears. Um. I, I can't remember what else, but I mean, he has had some uh, big time music video, um, music video uh, work, and then when he tried to make the shift to feature film, he had this fairly obscure biker film called Torque, or is it Talk? I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> um, um, you know, in, in Spanish it would be Torque. And in French, it will be talk. I don't know which. <laughs> I don't know where the word comes from, so I don't know. Uh, you know what the rules of which language it follows. But anyway, this biker movie. I think it may have co-starred Ice Cube. Um, I've actually seen it, just to show that I was once a film buff who was the strangest things. <laughs> I remember. Uh, it's just some 1 a.m. channel surfing binge of uh, settling on watching Torque. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that fucker. Anyway, um, there's a um, um, slash film cast interview of Josef Kahn about his experience on the set of Torque, where he was. The last thing they allowed him to be was an auteur. So I'd say that in most cases the studios think of directors with such ambitions as as, um, as like carrying plague. I mean they don't want to hear that. It's it's just it, it's something that um, that uh, uh, troubles their being counters souls to no end. So in a way, like, Josef Kahn uh, tells of the kind of adversity that uh, directors face and how it, it's not just some lack the talent to become auteurs, but some aren't even allowed to do that. So like, Josef Kahn, if, if you see the Nice of Sidonia music video, it's actually, uh, well, it's, it's, um, I, I feel like it's it's demonstrating a certain something that certainly is, isn't anywhere apparent in Torque. And and I, I remember when uh, the there was a project on Neuromancer, the the Gibson novel. Uh, 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 Joseph Kahn was uh, slated to be a director for it, but the, the fans of the novel looked at, wait, the director of some Ice Cube biker movie wants to do a beloved cyberpunk classic. No way in hell. So it, it's like, um, <laughs> you know, uh, basically, Joseph Kahn had to have both of his hands tied around his back when he was directing Torque, basically everyone else but him was allowed to make the decisions about the mise-en-scene, let's say. And, but then Josef Kahn has to, with, with him, uh, he has to sort of vouch for the quality that he didn't even make. Like, Josef Kahn has to take responsibility of the qualitative level in Torque, even though he... The, the decisions aren't his, basically. They're somebody else's. So there's this strange thing that Torque is treated like it's an auteur movie, even though absolutely no auteuring took place. So anyway, what's happening here is that, um, that uh, 
what the studio is like is uh, shooting coverage. Uh, so anyway, like um, it, uh, it, it's what Robert Bresson called filmed theater. So anyway, like the primacy is in the actor saying the lines. It, it, it's like a you know Spanish telenovela. Um, you know, there's a situation, uh, let's say there's, um, I, I don't know, I mean, three bank robbers with the loot and they, they've they just escaped from the scene and they're thinking about where to go next. Uh, what the studio cares about is nothing but documenting the actor saying the line. That's the entirety of what they care about. There's the melodrama, like let's say that they try to crank up intensity by uh, but, uh, sort of suggesting the danger that Yo, we gotta go man, they're, they're, <laughs> they're right behind us, they're right behind us, we gotta go man. But then uh, there's like um, momentum pushed, but then let's say another character pushes it back that no, no, no. No, we gotta keep it cool. We gotta keep it cool. Like, don't lose your head. And then um, it's it's like um, the actors create this tension by uh, b by just um, through the means of the theater. Like the visual storytelling isn't doing anything to create the tension. The actors are doing it. If you gr grasp the difference. Uh, um, the, the studios care about a very different kind of filmmaking than, than the people who know what the fuck the auto theory is. So anyway, if you know what the auto theory is, your chances of making it in Hollywood are very slight. Because you won't fit in with their um, little traditions. So anyway, like... The studios care about film theater and they shoot coverage in, in the sense that the visuals don't matter. Like the visual storytelling only exists to capture actors talking. So they sort of randomly choose a couple of different basic shot types. So like they shoot the melodrama in one master shot. So let's say there's, um, there's a long a uh, wide shot of the whole action being taking place. So the actors rehearse their scene as in theater and then uh, then, the, then they perform it in the wide shot. So it's like film theater. But then that's not enough. Like the, the producers think that it lacks intensity. That the average short length needs to have a tempo of a set amount of uh, a set amount of cuts per minute to count as as intensity in their books. So uh, even if it's just cutting, even if it's just uh, what may be termed a superfluous cut, so a cut that doesn't add anything. Let's say it just cuts from one angle to a slightly different angle. They like the cutting for its own sake. So the mock intensity of the editing is something... It, it's the reason why they shoot coverage. So the same uh, film theater is shot from different angles so that they can create their mock intensity in the editing. And so, you know, the... the um, syntax of the visual storytelling is just gibberish. It, it, uh, it doesn't mean anything as far as causality goes. No, uh, there isn't any rhyme or reason behind how they're cutting. They're just sort of... Um, um, the only thing that matters is that the melodrama that the actors are making is sort of uh, intelligible for the viewers. So that's the only goal with the short selection. So that they like cutting from close-up to close-up. Like, 
if if, if there's three robbers, they might like cut from close-ups of their faces, then close up of the uh, loot in like a brown bag, and then like close-ups of their guns in a handheld shot. So like they let's say they're holding guns, and the camera just pans through the guns, and then the camera might pan to you know show uh, I don't know sirens uh, like on, on the audio track there's sirens coming and, and it um, uh, sort of uh, foreshadows a lane through which they arrive so it there's this very much much a haphazard way of creating like you know how I just improvised it it, it, it says the visual storytelling is essentially of um, such a shallow depth that for all intents and purposes every decision is meaningless. Nothing adds up to a finer um, uh, finer meaning. So anyway, uh, because Hollywood has become like this, just keep in, in mind Music videos are more sophisticated in in the mise-en-scene than the Hollywood movies. Like in the 1950s, actors used to pride themselves of not being on television because TV was seen as this kind of... Um, there was a stand-up comedian who said that, you know why TV is a medium? Uh, because it's neither rare nor well done. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, people used to just crap all over TV, but it's not just that nowadays TV has become better than movies. With, you know, I mean, do you even need to make a case for some HBO shows like like The Wire or Sopranos being better than film releases? Like, not, not just TV is better, but, but even music videos have become better than movies. So the situation is fairly comical, I think it may be uh, said. So so anyway, just um, just trying to tell you what the what the sort of um, basic experience of uh, of the life on the. By the way, also commercials. Uh, if you've ever seen a car commercial. There's extreme precision to the visual storytelling. It, it, you know, lots of these people like uh, David Fincher, they and uh, Jonathan Glazer and, and whatever kinds of directors you get the name, is that uh, they started out doing uh, music videos and co commercials and that was... Uh, that was seen as better for them than to take some assistant director out in some Hollywood pot boilers or whatever. But just saying that both music videos and um, and uh, commercials have become just of, of finer quality than, than motion pictures. So yeah, it's, it's a strange situation. But anyway... Um, I just um, thought I'd, um, I'd give this uh, brief demonstration of what the auteur process is like. So anyway, the idea is that it, um, it goes against the collaborative nature of cinema, so that some directors might wish to sort of hash it out with the cinematographers, or like some directors like Terence Malick, they shoot 400 hours of footage and then have this platoon of editors try to discover a movie from there. Uh, like, um, even great directors can can uh, make those kinds of choices, but I'd say that uh, um, that's, that goes against what the textbook idea of the original author theory is. And so the idea is that you should write the script with, um, um, you know how um, 
do you know the um, phrase from literature, what is called the fair copy? That if you just uh, take a completely rough sketch of something, you write it essentially as a memo for yourself, but you cannot publish something like that. So you have to turn the rough sketch to the fair copy. Like some storyboards in cinema are like the rough sketch. It's just sort of vague ideas. But to me, the auteur process is when you are able to write the visual storytelling in the fair copy form. So anyway, uh, I just thought I'd, um, thought I'd write the Harlan Cage music video. Or, you know, if I was auditioning for the... Um, for for being allowed to do it um uh you know this is what i'd put down i didn't try to do anything fancy because i i wanted it to resemble an actual music video so you know i mean there's different schools of thought somebody like michel gondry sometimes tries to have something very you know elaborately artistic in his music videos and you know somebody like Mark Romanek has lots of famous videos that are nothing but just a band playing like the audio slave video with the fireworks I I can't remember what it's called but uh, you know it's it's conceptually simple but still extremely effective because of how it's it's shot um, but anyway, um, uh, yeah. uh, talk so much, I'm wearing my voice down. Uh, <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, you know, it's, um, it's the, the kind of, um, shit that Joseph Kahn had to deal with, um, it, it's it's basically the reason why I left cinema. I just thought that there was no no future in it. Uh, uh, I I um, took a different route, but um, yes, I very much wasted my youth um, youth with the kind of um, kind of uh, well. I suppose typical film buff past of uh, just um, jumping to the deep end and not caring about resurfacing anytime soon. <laughs> um, that um, happens to many. Uh, but anyway, yeah, then I went away for um, quite a while and um, and uh, uh, I, you know, do I care about cinema anymore? I, it's a difficult question. Um, my, my mother actually, she studied theology in university, but then she was never, I mean, she wasted so many years with that stuff. I mean, you know, she might use the word wasted. Um, and, and she, she was never able to get employed with uh, with what what she majored in, so she uh, she had to you know essentially learn journalism and various kinds of you know being an editor and being a, a you know a, well. Uh, lo lots of media related jobs so I uh, actually have in my family um, the, the kind of situation was where and where your original education may essentially be thrown away and just you know you roll with the punches and and take what you can get so uh, that's why it's it doesn't seem like such a big deal to me to just just um, throw the whole cinema thing away but uh, yeah I haven't yet decided I mean 
certainly I do not. I mean, I will never sign on to something like Torque. Not because I, I'd have anything against the movie exactly. I just, uh, I, I just will not enter something like that. Uh, so anyway, um, I I wrote them. I wrote the storyboard for the three nights running, and I I didn't write it for the whole song. I only wrote it for the first verse. Um, but first verse and then the first chorus, and then I thought that um, well, it it sort of stands in for the whole thing. I mean, I'm just just um trying to um. Uh, Trying to demonstrate how it is that a, di a director can lock down the shot selections without having to shoot coverage and without consulting with cinematographers uh, or editors about the selection. So to me, the auto theory proper is when the director authors the visual storytelling so the lack of collaboration to me is the thing it's it's not being anti anti um, teamwork but just i think you have to have the skill set even if you take input from others you have to have the skill set otherwise you cannot really call yourself a proper author but anyway i'll read what i wrote um i just sketch this fairly quickly uh, I don't know, let's see what happens um, so anyway, shot one highway at night a static wide shot overhead car speeding in the distance shot through a shot aligned around the axis of the highway that uh, zooms after a particular red car in slight slow motion disappearing into the night. Shot 3, cut to the inside of the car and a mid shot of the driver in profile. Shot 4, after the driver shifts his gaze in, inside the shot, an eye line cut to a road sign pointing to Mexican border approaching. Uh, Shot 3.2, cut back to the profile shot that has another shift of the driver's eyes. Now the photograph on the flap over the windshield and a lap dissolve out of the driver's profile to a close-up of the photograph. Then uh, cut from that to a return of the shot one angle of the highway and a cut from that to a shot two angle of the highway, but this time it has the border station at the end of it. That was the visuals for the worst one. So it's, it's sort of difficult. Um, I mean, I think the worst one lasts for something like 40 seconds, like if you have the intro and the worst one. Um, I mean, you know, they say of editing that it's a language that all can read, but few can write. So anyway, I don't know how you'll be able to follow the, tra uh, the track of my thoughts. But, um, well, I hope to some extent. Uh, I don't try to paste this... Uh, um, uh, to that my uh, reading of this would uh, uh, would be timed to how it would unfold in the music video. Obviously, the song determines that. But I'll just read this. Uh, read this at the pace that seems normal. So okay, now now the chorus. Uh, the last shot ended on a slow motion zoom in to the car and as the song is about to kick up a gear 
with the chorus um, a close-up of the face of the woman in the photograph is superimposed over the night sky. The sky in the original shot is dark and the background in the new shot is light. And as the drums are briefly at the peak tempo, the white uh, and the black uh, overhead keeps changing from the old shot to the new one. Uh, as the pre-chorus ends and chorus begins, it cuts to a head-on mid-shot of the driver behind his windshield and from there cuts to an extreme close-up of his hands gripping the steering wheel. Cut from that to a shot in an unspecified bedroom of the woman of the photograph being naked under a blanket which is slowly being pulled away, but before it does cuts back to a shot of the driver who is more actively agitated than before. Uh, between the lines of Three Nights of Running Alone and Sleepless, in the Cesura of the chorus, there is a series of traveling shots of the highway from the point of view of the driver's case, but they are edited with a disorienting and slightly misfitting jump cuts. Then with the sleepless line, he is at the border checkpoint um, and there is a line of cars ahead of him and he has exited the vehicle and is rubbing his eyes slowly in a shot that has the roof of the car framed the lower area, the night sky, the left of the screen and the administrative shacks the right. He stands there at the center. The shot is held for a while and as it cuts to a different angle, it reframes the character inside a square of the border crossing checkpoint so that a fourth wall obscures all American soil and the camera shows Mexico ahead. But as the character is seen watching somewhere into the fourth wall, the camera cuts 180 degrees to his point of view first of the highway, then a city uh, in some distance, then of a scene of him holding the woman in his arms spinning under some street lamps which is a shot that follows the same camera angle in a match match cut series but it's framed so that the diagonals inside the frame jump at the viewer from a, a slightly awkward unsettled place in the general harmony it cuts back to the original shot of him framed by the border post and now he turns 180 degrees inside the frame which remains static and we cut to a new point of view of him looking past the border seeing in a haze the woman of the photograph gesture that he follow her. There is cutting with matching eye lines of him standing still looking and her gesturing in mid shot from the waist up and of her luring uh, him forward. Then the same pattern with facial close ups and then an extreme close up of his eyes, which cuts to an extreme close up of her finger pointing to her chest. And then it cuts back to the original shot of him. Uh, looking towards Mexico. So anyway, uh, I let uh, let the um, lyrics of Three Nights Running by Harlan Cage uh, greatly determine what the content of the video is about. But uh, I just wanted to display, if you were able to follow it, uh, the causality of the different decisions decisions in the editing. So, uh, um, 
Yes, anyway. I don't know whether that song has a music video, uh, but if I was tasked to do it, that is what I would propose. Um, so yeah, uh, it's um, it, it, um, I I tried to have um, no wasted moment, so no cutting away purposelessly, and uh, you know, just. Uh, 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 certain specificity to the shot selections and the editing and uh, as I see it that is the skill set that an auteur should have the ability to author with the mise-en-scene which I think is French for stuff you put into the frame so, you know, the frame is the camera, so the, if you ignore the film theater, if you ignore the theater and simply con concentrate on, on, uh, on the uh, uh, techniques that are purely cinematic, the two things you have is that what you do with camera and what you do with editing. So, uh, to me, uh, an auteur, you know, the, the thematic elements of the script, that has nothing to do with the original auteur theory. Uh, that should be completely ignored. It's nothing but a red herring. Just don't care about that. What, what you have to be able to auteur with, you have to be able to be fluent with what is done with camera and what is done with editing. When you author with those, you are able to make auteur films. So anyway, those are my uh, uh, further ideas about the subject and uh, my slight demonstration of it. I hope it was intelligible, at least to some people. Uh, well, at least uh, I'm able to follow my, my uh, uh, you know, um, short list. But, well, uh, I, I hope this clarified something for someone. Um, thank you. Uh, for something. I'll just uh, go now. <laughs> Back to being a scruffy looking nerf herder, whatever that is. So, yeah.